Hi, this is Mr. Manley. This is a video, as you see, on multiplicity of zeros. But there are also some other issues in here about the form of a function and about graphing a function. Here I have three different forms of a function, and each of them have an approach. And the approach that we use for one might not be approach that we use for another. For instance, this first one, there are, first also notice that they're all cubic functions. And then the next thing is to notice how those, we are gonna deal with the form of the function that is given. So this first one here is uh, given as a transformation, right? It's a transformation of the x cubed function. So when I look at this, I think about the negative is a reflection of the parent function through the x-axis. This minus 3 is a horizontal shift, 3 to the right. And this minus 3 is a vertical shift, 3 down. And that's how it would deal with that function. Now, the second function is also a cubic function. But we're going to deal with this function uh, a little bit differently. The first thing that I would think about is probably the right-hand, left-hand behavior. And because this is cubic, I know it has the kind of S shape, right? And because it's negative, I know that it's increasing on the left and decreasing on the right. So I do have this idea for that function. And then the next thing that I would want to do would be to start working on this table of values. And I always am going to begin that with x is 0 to find the y-intercept, and y is 0 to find the x-intercept. So this is the approach that I would take with this function. And it's going to involve, when I, when I let f of x, when I let this f of x be 0, that's going to involve, if you look over at the function, let's just kind of cross that out and say, okay, that's going to be 0. So I'm going to have this, this expression equal to 0. And what am I going to do? I'm going to try and factor it. And if I can't factor it, I'll try and use the quadratic formula. And then there are other tools that, that we can use in, in this circumstance as well. But uh, that's as far as we'll go right now. Okay, so that's the second function. Now, the third function uh, down here, we'll get to that. Uh, this third function right there, okay, it's very much like the second function, but it's already factored. So when I go to this p position here, or this spot here, and I go when x is 0, okay, I can do that easily enough. If I zero out that x and I zero out that x, I'm going to have negative 2 times 1. So that's going to be negative 2. So I will have the, uh, the y-intercept. And then the next thing that I do is I let y equals 0. So I'm going to write that out that I'm uh, letting, it's actually not f of x in this case, right? It's h of x. So h of x is equal to 0, and that's going to find me the x-intercepts. And then that's uh, x minus 2 times x plus 1 squared equals 0. Now, normally on this step, I have some work to do. I need to factor it, but this is already factored for me. So I get these zeros at x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. So I could put that up here, 2, negative 1. So now I've got these, uh, these points that I can graph. So let's uh, go ahead and look at that. All right, now uh, using the table, we can, we have some points to plot. And we're also going to uh, know the left-hand, right-hand behavior from the function that's given. So I've got point uh, 0, negative 2. And let me establish my scale here. I think I'm just going to go, a, a, I'm going to do my scale like this, 1, 1, like that. Okay, so 0, negative 2 with that scale is going to be here. And that's going to be my y-intercept. And then I've got point 2, 0. 
and I've got point negative one zero. So you see that how I got I got point two zero and point negative one zero from that that part of the table. All right now I also know that this is a, a cubic function because I would have x squared times x if I were ex to expand and simplify this. So I know it's going to be a cubic function. We could actually look at that, right? We could expand it and, and get that and see that it is okay. It's, it's cubic and it's positive. So I'm expecting the shape to be like this, okay? Now, if you would take a moment and look at the points that we know, uh, the points that we've got so far, that point, that point, and that point, and we know that the shape is supposed to look like this. Now, why don't you just pause for a moment and s consider, all right, so what's the graph going to be? How's the graph going to go? Okay, so... Now I'm going to show you, and you might be surprised at uh, how the graph is going to go. It, is, it has to be uh, falling or decreasing on the right, and it has to be increasing. As I say right, it has to be decreasing on the left, it has to be increasing on the right, on the right hand. Now what's happening in between? Here is where we have multiplicity. So the multiplicity of the lesson title, multiplicity. The multiplicity of this zero, x plus one squared is two. So that's easy, easy enough to say, right? That the, uh, this has multiplicity two. The multiplicity of this other zero, is one. So the multiplicity is based upon whether or not it is squared or, and it could be cubed and I could say it has a multiplicity of three. So, and it depends on whether the factor is squared or the factor is to the first power or the factor is cubed, etc. That determines the multiplicity. When it has a multiplicity of two, as in this case here, that factor, x plus 1 squared, has a multiplicity of 2. That means that the 0 that we get from that factor does not pass through the x-axis. So I don't want that line. It bounces. It bounces off the x-axis. So there's still a 0 there. There's still an x-intercept, but it doesn't pass through it. It just touches the x-axis. And then this will come down through the y-intercept, and then this other zero here at two, we get the zero x equals two from that factor, the x minus two factor, that passes through the axis, passes through the x-axis. So the lesson here is that uh, if we have an even multiplicity an even multiplicity, the zero touches. So that's just going to touch the x-axis. And if we have an odd multiplicity, then the zero is going to pass through. We're going to pass through the x-axis. Okay? So that's multiplicity and also a, a little bit of information about graphing a polynomial function and also uh, a little bit of a comparison between the different forms of a polynomial function that can be given.